you're watching The Last Dance, I imagine, and you see the Rodman episode and uh, yeah. Car- Carmen Electra, uh, who I'm sure you crossed paths with back in the day then, uh, mm-hmm. if you were uh, right in the middle of the Rodman orbit when The Last Dance was uh, was actually being played. Um, w- did you learn anything? You, what were your thoughts well, when you watched well, that? Like, I, it was interesting. You know, I, I was all over the Rodman 30 for 30, and that was really cool. And uh, so I kind of went into the last dance. I hadn't been interviewed, and I'm wondering, you know, am I going to turn up in any of the footage? So first of all, the Vegas trip, which I kind of remember during that season, that, th- that last season in Chicago, I immediately started getting texts from some people like, hey, were you on that trip? And <laughs> I kind of had to go, wait, was I? You know, like, <laughs> I don't think I was on that one, nah, but there I... were a few. Right. I'm trying to, you know, I'm looking at the timing. Like, was it during the football season? I Probably not, but, that was, you know, it, it was kind of weird not to remember that it was such a blur. And then I just, um, I guess I'm amazed that there's so little footage that has surfaced. And I know it was a different era, thank God, without cell phone cameras and, and all that. But... You know, we were pretty conspicuous. You know, when we would go out in Chicago, for example, we would have dinner in front of everybody. We would go to Crowbar, a pulsating club full of, you know, thousand plus people and, you know, no VIP room. No, you know, we were right there in the middle of everything all the time. It was packed and you had to stay tight to, like, move around when we'd go to the next place. But, it was no secret, and um, he was very predictable. That you know, he had about five places he ate dinner. He had a couple places he ate lunch, and you know, a few clubs he went out to, a, a gay bar. Like it wasn't, you know, in a strip club. Like it wasn't unpredictable where he'd be, and and it wasn't a secret. And um, it just amazes me. I guess it's probably a good thing, but it just amazes me that there's not more footage of what we were doing. I I remember vividly, we were at the Mirage in Vegas where Rodman used to go until I think he was banned at one point after a drunken incident, I think leaving Las Vegas style. But uh, um, we were at the Mirage and we're playing craps out in the middle of everything and random people are coming by and being part of the table and Dennis is talking to everyone and uh, it, it was, you know, as overt of a celebrity scene as you'll ever see uh, and I remember Dennis at one point went to the bathroom and he kind of pointed to this little room in the middle of everything, little cordoned off area, kind of half room and there were a couple of tables in there and he said, see that? He said, that's where Michael goes when he comes here you know, he, it's just him and the dealer alone playing cards in that room and nobody can get in and I just said, you know, that doesn't look very fun. He said, no, you know, I I don't see how it could be. And just, you know, such a different approach. Now, and I don't want to compare the two. Michael Jordan was a more massive celebrity, uh, and rightfully so. We're talking about, you know, one of the most significant athletes in the the history of all sports. And, um, but Dennis was, you know, Dennis was the closest thing to that in sports at that time, just because of the the public theater and the the weirdness and the the uh, the loudness of it all. So uh, it was it was just such a divergent approach. So I guess uh, my question for you, Mike, is uh, what was your interaction with Jordan at all? I mean, did Jordan look at you like you were an enabler or an interloper? Because how how does it – it's amazing they won basketball games at the clip that they did with (laughs) everything that's going on. I mean, I know we're hearing about what a rock scene it was, but this truly was a a rock star setting for the NBA and – so how did Jordan view you? Uh, take me in, into that part, Mike. I, I don't think he was thrilled. To, not I don't I don't think it was personal, but I just think sure. I was just another guy that you know was around Dennis and doing stuff with Dennis and you know rolling in to the practice facility with Dennis at nine in the morning when he probably hadn't slept much. And um, I don't I wouldn't say enabler, but. You know, just just part of the show. Um, although I will say this, you know, I, Jordan knew that he, for the most part, could control 
Dennis in all things basketball, and you know you see that in the show. And and there, there's no way it would have worked otherwise because David Robinson wasn't controlling Dennis right at that point, and certainly after he left the Bulls, he was you know more wayward. But Jordan was still Jordan. So I mean, but it, it is really significant, right? Like think, how would Peyton Manning look at me if I were rolling into the Colts or Broncos orbit? during those heyday times with Dennis, with a football player living like Dennis Rodman. I mean, you know, he probably would want to rip my throat out deep inside. So, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't, I I mean, I had great interactions with Jordan. It was fine. I mean, he was, you know, it reminded me a lot of Jerry Rice. I came in covering the 49ers in the, you know, late 80 or 89 and then the early 90s. And that was as close to a rock star situation for a football team at that point with Joe Montana and Jerry Rice and Ronnie Lott and, and the ostentatiousness. It was amazing. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.